How do we comfort each other? How do we intercede on someone else's behalf? How do we begin the healing process? See, healing begins with prayer. It begins with prayer. Even in our minds, when we think of things that are good, things that are just, as the Bible says, it's a prayer. So our consolation to each other should be through prayer. Sometimes we're afraid to pray for each other because we think our problems are bigger than theirs. I'm not worthy to pray for him. I got problems bigger than his. Remember, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So when we pray, we pray in spirit and in truth, one to the other, because we love each and every one of them. The Bible says clearly that had there only been one person sitting in the church, one person, God would have still came down and did the same thing to deliver him up. You are worthy of prayer. We are worthy of the joy of the Lord simply because of who we are. And if you understand, remember like I said, there are two great commandments. We have to understand who God is. you got to understand who you are. You were created by Him and for Him and to His glory. So when we pray for each other, we are praying the Spirit in someone. <laughs> we're not being concerned with what's on the outside necessarily. Because the inside cleans up what's on the outside. So we're praying what's on the inside. What's on the inside of us is praying what's on the inside of somebody else. This is why we pray. The effectiveness of the church is through prayer. You give me two people who are praying in the church, and they can make a difference. A tremendous difference. You want to increase your faith? The fastest way to increase your faith is to have a life of prayer. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. In fact, sometimes, the younger you are, the more sincere you pray. You know, isn't that funny? You ever hear children pray? You now hear my children pray? When children pray, they're not afraid to ask God for anything. They'll ask for the moon. But when we get older, we stop asking for things. Why? Because society has told us we can't have it. You don't make enough money to have it. You're not in the right position to have it. You don't have the right credentials to have it. Don't tell a child that. They can pray not for anything. They believe they can do anything. Most of the time, you ask somebody what do they want to be when they grow up, they'll tell you all kinds of stuff. But somebody asks one of us, what do we want to be? All of a sudden, here comes your education. Here comes your credentials. We need to start praying in faith. If the Bible says with faith we can do anything, then we should be asking for anything. But not just asking, asking in belief. Our Holy, the Holy Spirit needs to be active inside of us. And the beginning of activation of the Holy Spirit begins with prayer. So we need to pray. Association with prayer is fasting. We don't talk enough about fasting. So half of us don't even know what it is, which is not good. Did the disciples fast? When, the, when Jesus Christ was asked why his disciples did not fast, what was his answer? If he's here, exactly. If he's here, you don't fast for somebody just standing next to you. But understand that when he went uh, and he ascended up to heaven, we need to fast. See, here's what fasting does and why it's, it's associated so closely with prayer. When we are fast, remember when I said that not to come to the altar with unclean hands. Yes, we have confessed. Yes, we have asked God to forgive us. Yes, we have came to the altar with the joy of the Lord in our heart. However, on the inside of us, we're unclean. Not just because of what we ate or didn't eat. Because of what we thought or didn't eat. See, the greatest contamination that you can do to your own body as a temple of the Holy Spirit is to allow things to be put in it that do not coincide with the Word of God. When you allow garbage to go into your mind, then you are contaminated spiritually. When we allow what the devil is saying to enter our minds and cultivate in our minds until what branches out is something that is certainly not the Bible. We have thoughts in our minds. The Bible said we should guard what goes into our minds. 
And when we do, fasting helps clear out the garbage that we have been thinking all week. It is not your fault that the society that we live in is full of garbage. I mean garbage on the TV, I mean garbage in the magazine, I mean garbage in the public, or garbage in Home Depot. It's garbage all over the place. And if we listen to this garbage and if we allow it to go into our minds, it will corrupt you. So fasting helps clear out the garbage. It helps clear our minds to receive what the Lord said of the Lord. Remember when the children of Israel was going to uh, hear from God and Moses told them that, well, we need, to, we need to consecrate ourselves before we can hear from God. And in consecrating themselves, they were told men should not sleep with their wives for that 24-hour period. This was one of the criteria. Because everything inside you must be clean, must be pure. We must think on the Word. If you have to read it until you fall asleep, put nothing but the Word inside your mind for a period of time. This is what fasting does. This is why the Bible said we should do it regularly. Not once a year, once a month. We should regularly have a routine of fasting. Because when we fast, we are preparing our minds to receive from God. See, the Holy Spirit reveals our truth. But in order for the Holy Spirit to reveal our truth, we need to prepare our minds. We need to be consecrated. This is what consecration means. It's cleansing. So that you can hear from God. God, the Bible says, has a small, still voice. If it's a small, still voice, and your mind is cluttered with garbage, how can you hear? See, you understand something. If we love the Lord enough, as the Bible says, to diligently seek Him, then what is our reward? If He is a reward to those who diligently seek Him, what's the reward? Yes. The Holy Spirit becomes active in us. And at that point, anything you ask, anything you ask, the Bible says you can receive it. So the beginning of the Reformation began with prayer. It began with someone understanding that this is beyond me. It's the Spirit in us. And that's why it's so important to have a life of prayer. It's so important that when we meet a, a stranger in the church, a visitor in the church, that we pray for them. It is important that when we have meetings in the church, come into the meeting in the spirit of prayer. Sometimes people come to meetings and they're already bickering before any words came out of their mouth. That's garbage. That's not love. And if it's not love, it's not God. So we need to have a clear mind. The Bible says, create in me a clean heart and a right spirit. That means we need to be cleansed of all the garbage. You're not held responsible for the garbage, but you're held responsible if you keep the garbage. We use our spiritual hefty bags and throw it out. This is what we need to do. It's very important that we understand when we have our children. Some of our children come to home with garbage. Mommy, she, they said this in school. Daddy, they said that in school. We need to teach them how to pray. Sometimes the children can teach us how to pray. So it's important. So prayer is everything. We can do nothing without prayer. And if the Holy Spirit is activated in our lives, then we can do anything. We can accomplish anything. We can double the size of the church, physically and spiritually. Anybody that has a need in the church can be met immediately through prayer because it increases our faith. In order for us to fulfill the will of God for the church, we need faith. And in order to have faith, we need to pray. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. The words that we use in prayer, are they important? Yes. Of course they are. And here's what I mean when I say the words we use. When you pray and you ask God for something and you say, I don't deserve this, and you say, I can't, I have earned this. Then what you are doing is you are blessing and cursing yourself at the same time. 
Don't do that. If you are coming to my, I mean, think of it as your father. Because he is our father. We don't have to prove to our father that we love him. How do you prove, how do your kids prove that they love you? They obey you. They obey you. Kids obey their prayers because they love them. And when we come to God, it's the same way. Bible says if we do not come as a child, we will in no way enter the kingdom. How does a child come to their father? In obedience and in love. This is how we come to the altar to pray. Because the last part, and this is the part that messes us up the most, is to be obedient to what we're told. We have to be sensitive enough to hear the will of God in prayer. But we got to be diligent enough to be obedient to what we're told. What messes us up is the obedient part. Because we get ignorant then. We say, oh no, I heard this, so I didn't hear that. What is revealed to you in your spirit will always be in harmony with the Bible. So we don't have to guess what God told us. We don't have to worry about asking somebody, wait a minute, this, this is what God told me. If it's in harmony with the Bible, that's what God said. If it's in line with His Word, we must obey. Without hesitation. Because this is what affects our faith. It's when God has to come to you four or five times to tell you something. When God has to reveal miracles to show you something. Something is wrong with our faith if that needs to be to happen. We need to be obedient to the will of God when it is told us. And the only way you can do this is through prayer. Through a foundation of prayer and having faith. Because our faith needs to be increased. There are things going on in the world that is scary and ugly. We don't need to mention this organization that's going around that's scaring everybody. Do you know that is a religious organization? ISIS is a religious organization. And they're literally scaring presidents to death, not just ours. And the only way, the only way that we're going to stay focused on what is our purpose is through the power of prayer. This is one of the reasons why we should be praying for our nation. We should be praying for the leadership. It doesn't matter whether you agree with it or not. That's not the point. What we do agree with is God's will. Amen. And when we agree with God's will, we can pray God's will over any situation. Amen. But we're praying in faith. We're praying and believe that the will of God will, not may, will happen. Because who does this earth belong to? It belongs to God. What did we just say in Genesis 1 1? See, that's why you go back to the Word. ISIS ain't in control. Governments are not in control. Who's in control? Nothing can happen that God don't allow to happen. And everything He allows to happen is for a reason. And the only way you know what the reason is to stay focused is through the power of prayer. There is a host of other reasons why we should be praying. A host of them. If we even talk about health, the health and well-being of our brother and our sister, do you know the fastest way to increase your health is through prayer? It is more potent than any pill. If we pray, when we lay hands on the sick, do they recover? It is not a question, it's a statement. Because the power of prayer is inside you. When you touch somebody, you pray for somebody, something is going to happen. It has to. Because you know the elements of the universe cannot disobey the word of, will of God. They can't. A rock doesn't have a free will. The wind and the rain does not have a free will. So when you speak something the authority of God through the power of prayer, it has to happen. It doesn't have a choice. This is why we need to increase our faith through the power of prayer. The activation of the Holy Spirit begins and ends with the power of prayer. If you heard me say the word prayer too much, then something is wrong. We 
need to understand that everything we do begins and ends with prayer. Our health, our well-being, financially. You know, when we talk about finances, people are scared to talk about money in the church. I don't have a problem with that. The Bible's not against money. What is the root of all evil? The love of money. When I love money more than my brother or my sister, when I love money more than God, then it becomes a sin and it becomes a curse. So how do we increase our finances? What does Malachi say? We pay tithes and offerings. But you know what? When you pay tithes and offerings, if you're paying tithes and offerings, but you're not praying over it before you give it to God, then how can it bless you? This is why we pray over the tithes. You should be praying before you decide what to give. That's why it's tithes and offerings. If it belongs to God anyway, and He's only asking for 10%, then what should be your offering? We should be praying over it. Because if God is going to multiply, we should be giving Him all we can. His multiplication works better than ours anyway. No base sin system in heaven. There's no metric system in heaven. It's faith. So give with faith. But give over prayer. How many of us think we know enough about the Bible right now? You want to increase your knowledge and wisdom? Amen. The book of Proverbs is full of what? It's full of wisdom. What is the book of Psalms? It's full of inspiration. When you read the Psalms and when you read Proverbs, don't read it just for knowledge. Read it for understanding. But do it through prayer. Remember, the Holy Spirit reveals the truth. So we should be confused about what it says. We should do it over prayer. What about leadership? We have leadership in this church. From the pastor on down, or on up. Because remember, nobody's more important than somebody else. No matter what your gift is, no matter what your job is. Do we pray for the leadership in this church? Do we lay hands on the leadership in faith in this church? See, when we come to church, we're not coming just to say, hello, how you doing? God bless you, and let me let him go. We're coming to strengthen him. You need to leave here stronger than you came in here with. Otherwise, what do we do? We're going to have a meal when we leave. And the purpose of the meal is for fellowship. For us to have an opportunity to come to each other over a meal and bless each other. But if we do this without prayer, if you take out prayer, then there's no point. Because it doesn't end in faith. If I belittle the point, everything we do begins and ends with prayer. If we do that, then we are fulfilling the will of God for the church. The results of the fulfillment of the will of God is what? That when he returns, who is he coming for? But he can't come for the bride. He can't start the wedding if the bride is not ready. And according to the Bible, if the bride is not ready, what happens if you're not ready when he comes? When he returns, when Jesus Christ returns to this earth, everybody who is not ready will not go with him. Sometimes it's hard to say doom and gloom. It isn't doom and gloom if you're prepared. If you're not prepared, you're doomed already, according to the Bible. You're condemned already if we're not prepared. And in order to get prepared as a church, we need to pray. But we need to pray in faith. We need to pray believing what we've spoken. You need to know the will of God for your life. Because he has a will for every one of us. Every one of us. He gives us spiritual gifts in order for us to carry out his mission which is a fulfillment of his will. So as a church, we need to pray. As people of God, we need to pray. As brothers and sisters, we need to pray. As leadership, we need to pray. Because believe it or not, everybody's a leader. No matter what your position is in the church, you're a leader. 
and we need to pray. Because all the people who are behind us, all the people who are in your neighborhood, who are on your job, who you run in contact, come in contact with, you need to be praying for them. If God puts somebody in your path, he's putting them in front of your path for a reason, begin to pray. Does that make sense? Amen. You know, I'll tell you something. I do really love this church. And when I look in the future of this church, I see people who love God and who are willing to serve. There are some who are not. There are some who are here for other reasons. But that's okay. Do we let the wheat grow with the tears? Yes. And at harvest time, then we know what was going in our barn. So it's okay if there's a tear among us. Don't be upset about that. That's another reason to pray. And if we have brought joy to anybody, then we give God all the credit, all the glory, and all the honor. If we have helped anybody understand even one scripture, we give God all the glory and credit. We are just leaving, but we are not going far. We're only two hours away. And I'm not changing my phone number. So anybody that wants to get in touch with us can do that. Anybody that wants prayer, call me. I don't have a problem praying on the phone. Last time I talked to the pastor on the phone, before he hung up, he had to pray. And I appreciate that. So I just want to leave y'all with this. If the love of God is truly in your heart, you have a burning to pray. You have a desire to fulfill God's will for your life. And I want to see everyone Every person here increase their faith by the ability to pray. It's not just in a word. It's not just in your heart. It's not just in your minds. It is the way we live. It is our life's blood, spiritually. It's the ability and the will to pray. And when we do that, then our connection together will never be separated. We will never be apart. Because spiritually, we are on the same page. We are on one accord, and we are on one mind. And when that happens, and the Holy Spirit comes down, then the miracles of God is every person affected by His Spirit that is in you. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the leadership of this church. I thank you for every member of this church. I thank you for the visitors in this church today. I thank you for my special family in this church. I thank you for your will for each and every person in this church. Lord, this your Sabbath day. Let us lead with grace. Let us lead with humility. Let us lead with joy unspeakable Amen. to your word and to your will. And let all those in agreement with this prayer say, Amen. 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 The closing song today is sweet.